Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Friday, November 4th, 2022. And as you wake up and you start this brand new day, thank God for this day. Commit this day to Him. Use this day to bring glory and honor to our Lord. And use this day to share your faith with someone and encourage somebody. And while you're out and about today, take some time and give God praise. Because He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy of our thanksgiving. Today is November the 4th and it is National Candy Day. I like candy. Uh, like all kind of candy. But if I had to pick just one as my favorite, I think it would just be the classic Hershey milk chocolate bar. Or the Reese's peanut butter cup. One of them two would be my favorite. What about you? What's your favorite candy bar? Uh, put it in the, in the comments if you think about it today. Today we're going to finish up our series that we've done all week. Talking about the verse Philippians Chapter 4 and verse 13, where I said all week long that this is my favorite verse, the verse that that the Lord reminds me of quite often as I go through day-to-day living for the Lord. And it simply says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And we've looked at Philip, we've looked at, at Stephen, and we've looked at Paul, and we've seen ways that they lived out this verse. And today we're going to finish up the series by looking at Peter and seeing how he had lived out this verse as well. And there's a lot of stuff we could talk about with Peter, but I'm going to focus on just one thing today. And it's found in Matthew chapter 14. And we're going to look at verses 22 through 32. And scripture says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side of the sea, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he had went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when evening, evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, Is it the Spirit? And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him, and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the, uh, into the ship, the wind ceased. Friends, this is a pretty straight, straightforward story here, so there's not a whole lot of commentary that I can give you for this. Uh, but Jesus sent his disciples out, out onto the, onto the sea to go start their way to the other side of the sea, and Jesus sent the multitudes home. They just fed the 5,000, and Jesus had sent the multitudes home and, and went up on a mountainside to pray to get some alone time with his father. And while he was making his way back to them, the ship was in the midst of the sea. It was going through a storm. It was tossed. It was rocking. Waves were crashing all around. The disciples probably thought they were in danger. And they see Jesus come walking on the sea. And one of the things I like so much about Peter, I think, is a lot of time he times he acts without really thinking things through. And when Jesus said in verse 27, be of good cheer, for it is I, be not afraid. Peter is the one that spoke up for the group and said, said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. Now, as a rational person, I don't think any of us would volunteer to get down out of a boat and get in the water. I like going on cruises. I like taking 
taking cruises and I've never got a spot when I was out in the Atlantic Ocean or in the Caribbean Sea where I thought, man, this is a good place to get out of the boat and see if I can walk on water. But that's what Peter did. He saw Jesus walking on water and, and he thought, well, Jesus could do it. I can do it. So he says to Jesus, hey, if it's you out there, bid me to come on the water. And Jesus said to him, come. I don't know if that's the response that, that Peter was expecting, but that's the response that he got. Kind of that double dog dare you kind of thing there. And the scripture says that when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He did it. He walked on the water. He had his eyes fixed on Jesus. But then disaster happens. And in verse 30, we read, But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Was Jesus not able to end or to hold up his end of the bargain? Peter said, Jesus, if it's you, let me come to you on the sea. Let me walk on water. And Jesus told him to come. And what happens? Peter sinks. Does that mean Jesus didn't hold up his end of the bargain? Absolutely not. That's not at all what that means. Verse 30 here, I'm sorry, verse 29 here, says clearly he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Peter did that. I don't know how far he got. Maybe a few steps away from the boat, maybe just far enough that he couldn't couldn't reach back and grab a hold of the boat anymore, but he was too far away from Jesus that he couldn't reach out and touch Jesus. But at that moment, Peter was walking on water, and he took his eyes off of Jesus when he started focusing on what was going on around him, when he started focusing on the waves, when he started focusing on the wind, most likely focusing on the rain. He took his eyes off of Jesus, and when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he sunk. Jesus had nothing to do with that. Jesus had nothing to do with Peter taking his eyes off him. But you know what? The same thing happens to each one of us. As long as we stay focused on Jesus, we're able to live out that verse, Philippians 4.13. We're able to do the things God called us to do. We're able to do those things because of the strength that Jesus gives us. But then we look around at our circumstances, and just like Peter, we sink because we took our eyes off of Jesus. It's not Jesus who is messing up. It's not Jesus who can't lift it and keep his end of the bargain. It's you and me, and it's Peter because we take our eyes off of him. We, we display a lack of faith. So when Jesus calls you to do something, no matter how far-fetched it may seem, when Jesus called you to do something and you got confirmation that that indeed is, is Jesus' desire, Jesus' will for your life, then it's up to you to get out of the boat and to do that. Peter's the only one of the twelve that chimed up and said, hey, if it's you, let me come to you, Jesus. There was twelve other or ten others on the boat, eleven others on that boat. The rest of them kept quiet. Peter's the only one that got out of that boat. There was 11 others on that boat who were too cowards to get out and do anything. For them, that boat represented a place of safety, and they weren't willing to step out of that comfort zone, out of that place of safety, and try out Jesus. But you know what? We receive our greatest blessings when we step out of that boat. When God has called us to do something that's maybe out of our comfort zone. Scripture tells us that as soon as as Peter started sinking and he cried out and said, Lord, save me. Verse 31 says, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? O you of little faith. Peter could have walked the whole way to Jesus. I don't know how far Jesus was out. Maybe it was a few feet. Maybe it was a few hundred feet. I don't know how far Peter had to walk. But he had to take that first step. And he took that first step. And he took that second step. Maybe he took that third step and fourth step. But at some point, he took his eyes off of Jesus. And he put him on his surroundings. 
and disaster happened for him, just like disaster happens for you and me when we take our eyes off of Jesus and put it on our circumstances. So friends, keep focused on Jesus. Keep focused on him. Don't let your surroundings cause you to stumble and fall, but keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Think about that as you go through this day, and remember, get into God's word and allow God's word to get into you, and then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day. (music) 